Hallelujah. Amen. Happy New Year. Amen. Please be seated. Wow. Chirunji. We have crossed over. Twice a mwaka. Amen. Everything's new. We have new opportunities. We have a new opportunity. We have an opportunity to reset. To readjust. To make a conscious decision to turn and adjust back to the heart of God in areas that we need to. We need to be that church that returns to its first love. Let us be the church. When I say the church, I'm talking about the church. Not the church sitting here. And not even the church that's alive right now. I'm talking about the church from the beginning to the end. We can make a conscious decision because God has given us a free will to turn to our first love. A new beginning is an opportunity to rediscover how and why we fell in love with Jesus. It is a time to revisit and reflect on the visions and the plans that God gave us in past seasons. It is a new opportunity to put ourselves in the position to see those things that we desire and we dream of come to pass. God's quickening. He's doing a quick work in the last days. The dark is getting darker and the light is getting lighter. So is that light in you shining brightly? If it is not burning brightly the way that you know it should be, you have the opportunity to make the decision to step back in the fire that will re refine you. That will burn those things off that have held you back. Hallelujah. 2023 is a year that we turn back to the fear of the Lord. How many of you want to be wise? Well, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And Jesus is always found in the middle of the fire. It's a place that he invites us to go to spend time with him so that we can have all the things, all the weights and the sin 
that has weighed us down and caused us to stumble he's calling us into that place that those things that can finally be burnt off you see 2023 is going to be a year you have never experienced what the world is going to call bad God is going to call good the fire is going to get so hot that those that run into it are going to be free they are going to be free of everything that's held them back and he's going to cause everything that he promised you to come to you 2023 is a year to a call of obedience. 2023 is a year of the hearing of the Lord. It is a time that you will pray and believe that God will give you spiritual ears and that you will hear his voice clearly and because you're wise you will be obedient to what he tells you hallelujah my fellow believers when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties see it as a very valuable opportunity this is an opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can ever experience for you know that when your faith is tested you know that when your faith is tested it stirs up the power of God in you for endurance and as your endurance grows even stronger it will release perfection in every part of you not only in your spirit but your soul but your soul in your body as you endure in faith the trials set before you God will supernaturally strengthen you and as you become strengthened the body of Christ becomes strengthened because when you are strong you strengthen the one that is next to you when you are strong you become the influence you become the one that has taken the dominion by stepping into who you are who Christ created you to be and in that dominion you take the land back that the devil has stolen and every bit of land that you take you are establishing the kingdom of God hallelujah and when you step in to what belongs to you in Christ Jesus oh hallelujah and if anyone longs to be wise you can ask for wisdom 
in true wisdom as I said is the fear of the Lord and when you walk in wisdom it puts you in a position that perfection is released not only into you but into the body of Christ. When you walk in wisdom, you will find that you stepped into a place where you have no lack. For in wisdom, there is no lack. Hallelujah. If you feel embarrassed to humble yourself and ask for wisdom, you need to draw closer in relationship to God. Because it's not just about knowing about Him. It is becoming to understand His ways when you understand God's ways as a good heavenly father you know that your father will not shame you for admitting that you don't know something so if you lack wisdom in any area humble yourself and pray and he will give those wisdom that ask hallelujah God is generous with his grace his grace is for a is for you in abundance. He paid the price at Calvary so that you could have the grace to walk in any wisdom that he would give you. For it is in the wisdom of God that you run to him in times of trouble and in times of need and he will strengthen you to overcome and accomplish the things that he has spoken to you. Hallelujah. When we come to our Heavenly Father, we need to come in faith believing. For he that comes to the Father, not in faith, is a double-minded person. One moment, they're sure. And the next moment, they're not sure. Our God, our Father, wants us to dwell with Him. He wants us to live in Christ. He does not want us to live one moment in the world and living in the world is thinking the way the world thinks then in the other moment be in the mood to walk in faith because you feel good we can only come to that place where we're single minded when we have one heart and that is in him a double minded person is unstable in all their ways because your time of faith will take you one direction then your worldly thinking takes you into doubt and unbelief. Worldly thinking is motivated by fear. Worldly thinking is motivated by fear. So we need to be one with the Lord and be single-minded and not wavering. Otherwise, we're like a wave in the sea. 
We become tossed back and forth. We become beat up. We see signs that we're walking in God's will. Then we wonder why it didn't turn out the way that we planned it. The answer is in Christ Jesus. It's to develop the fear of the Lord so that we can walk in the wisdom that He gives us freely when we ask. You see, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy us. So he puts temptations that God can turn into a test or we can yield to it and become a failure. God has not called us to fail. Every thought that he has ever had about you is good. So if his thoughts towards you are good, it means when he put you in this earth, he already saw you winning your race. He already seen you accomplishing everything. He's given us everything that we need. But he created us like him. He has given us one thing that no other living creature has. It is a free will. We can choose one day to serve God. We can choose the next day to satisfy our flesh. And we can still be born again. But that's not why and how he created us. He loves us so much that he wants to give us a choice to love him back. It's impossible to love God without being obedient to what he says. So when we ask for wisdom, we can't ask just we can't ask a miss. We can't just say, oh God, give me wisdom because I have this problem. Then the, the, then the, the problem is solved. Then we just go back and living our life the way we did before. I'm telling you, we can't do that in 2023. Because there's a separating going on. There's a fence down the middle. And too many have tried walking on the fence. And what happens when you walk on the fence? something is going to happen that will cause you to lean one way or another. And when that happens, you're either going to be all in or you're going to be out. And we're at a time that if you're out, you're only going to see what God is doing from the outside. Why take a chance when you can run and be all in so that you don't only see what God is doing. You are the one that God is using and working through. And those that walk on the fence and they slip and fall in the middle, 
they end up being, they end up becoming unable to reproduce. If you are in the middle, you become impotent. Because you're at a state where you're going to slip and fall. And you're going to ruin yourself that you can't recreate. This year of 2023 is a prophetic year that was spoken about by prophets of past. And it is a time that those that are in are going to be part of the greatest move of God that this earth has ever seen. It has already begun. And it is picking up steam. It is increasing. You see what is happening is happening in the spirit. It is happening in the hearts of man. But there is an adversary, the devil, that is fighting you. You know, in 1 Samuel, Samuel, First Samuel, I'm going to read from the message Bible. In verse, in verse 32 of chapter 17, it says, Master, this is David as a young teenager. And he's talking to King Saul. This is concerning Goliath. He said, Master, don't give up hope. David was talking to the king as, a, as one that was a lowly shepherd boy. He told the king, he said, I am ready to go fight this Philistine. How many of you can say, I am ready? But you know what the king said? He said, no. David's brothers they mocked him and they accused him of being prideful. David's brothers accused him of only wanting to come and see the show. But you know what David had? David had a testimony. David had a testimony. David did what he did as a shepherd. Unto the Lord. He, he spent his time writing songs and poems. And singing music unto the Lord. So he was a worshiper and he praised the Lord and his mind was on the things of God. And during this time, he had temptations come. He had tests and trials come. And you know, one of them was a bear and one of them was a lion. And I'm sure there was many other things that came in, into his life during that time. But you know, everything that came against him, every, he had an opportunity to run. 
he had an opportunity to make a different decision to deal with these he could have surrendered the sheep he could have let the sheep go to the lion and be eaten so what would you do in his situation you see he used the things that he liked to do like playing with the slingshot like any 15 year old boy would like to do he liked to play with gadgets in his free time when he didn't have anything to do and you know what playing with that gadget did he wasn't playing with that gadget to take on a Goliath he perfected something that he had a desire to do he recognized the, a gift to use a sling and he practiced until he became very very good and every time that he would practice his confidence would grow so the thing that you have going on in your life be it school your job ministry in the church you are in your season of being perfected for the opportunity to pass a test that is coming your way you see trials offenses their promise they're coming what are you going to do with them when they come what you're going to do with them is what you practice on your daily in your daily routine in developing what you do unto the Lord and developing good habits by putting the Lord first it caused a grace to come upon him that set him up for his future you see you can say it was a lion you can say it was a bear but you know what I see I see doors of opportunity small doors lead to bigger doors you see at the right time in the right place despite even what the authorities were saying he, David knew a greater authority he knew what God was doing in him because God, in what he was putting his hands to was developing a spirit of excellence David had the confidence to boldly say I'm ready and I'm willing and I'm able to slay this Goliath this Philistine that dares defies Israel how many people how many soldiers do you think were in Israel's army and none of them not one of them had the courage to take on Goliath but you have this young teenager because of his, first his relationship with God and secondly what he did with what God gave him in a position that was lowly 
And he was, he had no other people around him to impress. So this young boy out in the bush, tending some sheep, was being trained up to be a king. He was being trained up to stand in front of a door that was going to qualify him and take him to the next level. You see, when David, you see, when David came after the giant, he did not come after the giant hiding behind things. He ran after the giant to take him down. You know, David used what he had. And he knew what he had was enough to take the giant down. But you know, a slingshot and a rock and a stone a slingshot, a sling, and a stone was not a weapon designed to kill a big foe. David had wisdom because he spent time with God. He did not think of himself more highly than he ought to. His confidence was in God and the ability that God gave him and David knew that he perfected that gift to the point that he ran at the giant a giant that is, was over three meters tall and very experienced as a soldier and never lost to anyone ever but you know what David's wisdom was he didn't run after him to kill him with the sling he took what God gave him and brought Goliath down to his level he, he took Goliath down that stone didn't kill the giant. But he dropped him and put him at a place where David stood over him. <laughs> that David slew the giant. Not only did he slew the, slay the giant. Listen to me. He took Goliath's weapon that Goliath was going to kill him with and he took off his head. You see, when that head came off because of the words of the mouth of Goliath before that battle he obligated the Philistine nation to surrender and serve Israel. And God used a boy who knew him and developed what he had, the little he had. Stones from a ground, a piece of leather from an animal, is all David needed to neutralize the enemy and take what the enemy possessed and use it against them and do what an entire army of Israel couldn't do. 
So now we have David Daudi, who is not even old enough to be a soldier. At that time, you had to be 20 years old to be a soldier. So God has a way of changing the rules to put you in a position that you don't even qualify for. Amen. Amen. David was appointed as a ruler in Israel's army before he was old enough to even be in the um, you see, God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. It is impossible to please God without faith. God develops our faith. On how we deal with our circumstances and situations in everyday life, our daily life qualifies us to take us to our next level, not only here on earth, but our life after. We are here on earth to qualify. We are here to take the little that we have and take it and use it unto the Lord. And as we do that, He helps us perfect what He gave us, our giftings, our talents, the desires that He's put in us are things that he wants to develop so that when we stand in front of our Goliath, it, your Goliath becomes the door to take you nowhere, where no man can. Hallelujah. Well, I welcome you to 2023. This is a year that God is going to take you places if you will face your lions and your bears and your Goliaths in faith because of what you do when nobody's watching what you do in the bush tending your sheep what you do behind closed doors in your prayer closet what you do when nobody else is around and you're singing praises unto the one who created you God is no respecter of person what he did for David he will do for you in the purpose and the plan he created for you so when I say this this is a year of being obedient. Be obedient to what God is saying. What he is showing you. And trust that he is perfecting you even when you don't even know it. You cannot, you cannot mess up this up if you pursue him with all your heart he knew you from the beginning he knew every mistake that you would make along the way you see when David finished his race when David finished his life he had many mistakes but you know what is said about David? He was a man after God's own heart. He had a heart for God. And God used him mightily. And he wants to use you mightily. Hallelujah. Thank you. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor, for giving me the opportunity to share the first message of the year for 
for generation changers. Church. Let's give the Lord a hand clap.